Yeah, you know, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, congratulations on season two. That's great. It's amazing. I loved it. Yeah, so I'm going to get straight to the questions because I'm sure you're tired now. So um, uh, I was going to ask Sandra this too, but um, unfortunately she's not here. So do you feel like with uh, Beauty going and looking for her dad and, you know, trying by all means to create some sort of bond, was it for her to fill that void that she had or do you feel like she just needed some healing? Was it fair for Busiso too? What is your opinion on that? Well, I mean, geez, isn't isn't an absent father the the, the you know the, I don't want to say it in the sense, but like you know, isn't it the the, the, the South African story? Um, isn't it yeah. a world, global? Isn't it a global story? Huh? Yeah. Uh, and and we've seen how my, how detrimental it is for a child to be you know to to, to grow up without a father. And it leaves a, and it obviously leaves a mark on the child as they grow up. It leaves scratches and scars, you know. And I, 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 I don't think playing school. I don't think school actually. Um, I don't think he hated the the idea. I think he just tried to protect beauty from from being hurt by it. Because you do know that sometimes when you're left vulnerable, somebody will definitely come and take advantage of that. And I think as much as you say it's like, was, was it unfair for school? I don't think it necessarily was because he understood that um, you know people grieve in a, in a different way. Also, he was grieving as well. So he was just he was just overwhelmed by what was happening. But ultimately, at the end of the day, school does really love beauty and he wants to see her safe at all times. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And um, there was a lot of chemistry between beauty and species of this season. And I loved it. Was there any sort of preparation for that? Or it just it was an organic feeling for you guys? I mean, you know, I'll take that. Um, I think organically it was that feeling, but also, you know, like if you know how we shot season one of How to Win Christmas, the wedding, like the wedding, you know, it was um, we were all in a bubble, and so that created a family, familial bond in a way, you know, and that thing lasted. That that bond lasted for the whole year going into season two, which is How to Win Christmas, the funeral. So I think it's just uh, still being the family and just from there trying to make it better meaning there's this level being the family having you know Tan Tan knows me i know Tango as well school beauty etc etc coming back to the characters now from there let's take it further let's really dive deep and obviously the script also helped out a lot on that because in this one we were diving deeper in in, in, in marriage and how they are with that marriage and now it's a funeral and we're all trying to solve you know this funeral incident and i think with that we found the comfort in being with ourselves, or being, or this is and beauty. With all that, we found comfort in being with each other. And I think that's what really helped with the chemistry. Yeah, and um, Spusiso is a different character from, from the characters you've played. I'm, I'm a fan, by the way. So oh, yeah. was it, is there anything that you learned or took from playing Spusiso? I mean, you know, Spusiso, I think uh, Spusiso really, 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 I, I, I relate a lot with, with Spusiso. I have seen a lot of the characters that I play, they're quite on the opposite side of the spectrum, but I really relate as well with Spusiso. Uh, I am a problem solver. Uh, I, I am a sensitive young soul, and Spusiso, that, that's what he is. You know, He does want to fix other people's problems. He does feel a specific way. He's very empathetic. And so I think that's one thing that I'd say the relatability is between me and Spusiso Twana on the show, yeah. Great. And then um, the relationship between Sposisto and, and his dad was really great. And to a point where he said he's his favorite son. So I even asked, uh, say, on the other room, do you feel like it, it is important for, especially us Black boys, to have some sort of relationship with our fathers? Oh, of course. Oh, yes, of course. Um, it's really, it's really important for, for I think, more, just more than just um, us little growing up black boys, just, just, just sons and daughters to have a really great relationship with their fathers because they really, they, I mean, the first person you love as a, as a woman, though, the first person you love is your father. And the first person who teaches you as a son is your father. And you watch how your father in, like, interacts with the world and you learn from that. And I really do think it's important. And it's important for a father to tell the son that they love them. It's important for them to show affection because that teaches the son how to also be an affectionate man. You know, so no, definitely it's, it really is important, 100%. 
Yeah, and then on the show, there were a lot of legends, like a lot of great people. How was that experience with you working with those big people? Is there anything that, you know, you took and any inspiration from that? Uh, where do I even begin? Uh, you know, you know, like people, when you watch, when you watch veterans and you, 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 you think about veterans, you think about, true, maybe these people are not going to want to share their knowledge or anything of the sort. Was my mind not blown when I was watching them play and, and they really do play and they turn into these, 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 these characters on set. And even when you're outside and not shooting, they're just so friendly. And, and you get to learn that, you know what, you understand why these people have been in the industry for as long as they have, because of just how they are. They're really friendly with people and they really do share their knowledge. Like let's say I was doing a, a specific scene, uh, saying to the same walk up to me and said, try this one. And I'm looking at him like, thank you. I, I was really very insecure about this scene, but that really works. It's just those things that they give you, you know, they're so secure within themselves and they've been in this industry for so long that they have nothing to prove. And so being in that environment, then you get to actually see them play, you know, it's just so freeing. And have, being on set and having somebody to actually give you pointers, you don't necessarily get that a lot in our industry. And now having to work with them and them doing that, of course, of course, you're going to bring out your best. And you know what they always say growing up, uh, I used to play rugby. Sorry to digress. I used to play rugby growing up. And they used to say, if you're playing with the, with the first team, you're going to have first team traits. You're going to have the first team skill. And I think that's what um, season two of How to Win Christmas, actually How to Win Christmas in general, working with all these veterans has done for you. you know? Yeah. But is there anyone in speci uh, specific, specific that you wish you had done more scenes with on the show? Um, hmm. I mean, I was really happy with all the scenes that I've done with, with each individual character, each individual cast. But one person that I think I would have loved uh, having more scenes with would have to be uh, Trevor. No, 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 I'll be honest, Mutazi. Uh, Mutazi, you know, season two, you know, we were both dealing with just so much in, within our families, with our, you know, immediate families outside of the big family that we didn't, the characters didn't necessarily um, meet up as often because, you know, Mukazi taught me a lot with regards to, 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 to play characters and such and all the improvisation that he does, you know, he brings out the funny. And I've, I'd always be left so shocked at how he would manage to do that so quickly on the fly, you know, and yeah, working with him was very amazing and I would have loved to work, have worked more with him for the season. Yeah. So yes. I'm going to get deep now. Uh, losing a child is one of the most traumatic things. I can't imagine that. And I felt like, you know, your scenes with uh, Tando of Beauty was really emotional and touching. And I, I saw that you guys were deep within there. Was there any sort of preparation or research that you had to uh, do in order to actually get into that moment? Yeah, the thing is, like I said, um, Loss is a loss is is, 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 a, is is a thing that we all experienced. We really did. We've all we've all known loss, and we've lost very uh, close people in the past, especially now with COVID. Everybody's lost a person, you know. And like I said, um, we don't. I don't. We didn't. This time we don't want to go into research mode into this. We really wanted to be truthful with the characters. We didn't want to bring in our own expectations to the characters and say, okay, in this moment, I think I myself suddenly thinks that the character here should behave this way. Or in this moment, I suddenly think that based on the statistics, the character should then behave this way. I think we wouldn't be doing any justice to the character. So what we did is that we really left Sunday then and Tanya behind. We really were still with Spusiso Twala and, 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 and Beauty Silo and we were being truthful in the moment and in the present moment. And what we were doing is that we were really feeling off one another and listening to one another. And I think that that's what brings in those scenes and that's why it looks the way that it does because first of all we know the histories of the characters and we know how much they really wanted the specific thing and that being taken away from them uh you know we just we just let them be we let them play and, and that's that, that that was the outcome you know yeah, that's great. And I really liked how supportive Spusiso is. And I think, you know, with repre representation, with, especially to Black men, that, that was very important, you know, instead of just, you know, forgetting everything, but actually just try to, you know, let's hope, let's hope, let's talk yeah. about it. Yeah. It was really great. And then um, I know last season and this is a new show, you guys shot during a pandemic, but um, did you guys have fun in Devon? Because that was great. And we, we always, you know, Vibe this site. So I mean, yeah, I mean, first things first. You know, uh, props to 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 the writers for of, of how to Christmas the funeral for actually taking us to KZN for us to shoot in that such a beautiful province. Ah, the scenery, the landscapes. 
you know, when they ask me, how, what do I think about season, uh, season two of How to Win Christmas? Uh, I always tell them that, you know, it's more grandiose. Uh, we are actually see more of, 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 of the Twilers, you know, where, where they're from. We're getting a, like a history lesson of sorts. We're getting to meet new characters and getting to see who plays it in. And yes, we definitely had fun. I um, mean, obviously, it's still COVID times, so we didn't get to explore KZM as much as we wanted to. Uh, we even had a production break because we were so careful in shooting during COVID times. So, uh, of course, yeah, we had to take into those like, that into consideration. But ultimately, we really enjoyed it. And I'm sure in season two, uh, you get to see just how much we really did. How important do you think it is honoring the dead's wishes? Because sometimes, you know, especially with Koko Twala, there was there were some things that she said that she's like, okay, this is not good to him. So in your yeah. opinion, how important it is to honor somebody's wishes or the dead's wishes? I mean, I mean, even the way that you put it, you know, the question, how important is it to honor uh, the dead's wishes, you know? I think honoring the, the, the dead persons, um, the, the one who's passed away, their wishes is, 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 a sign of, is a sign of respect. And you know, as South Africans, we're really big on respect, and especially uh, traditionally so and culturally so, we really are big on respect. And I think that's one thing about how to win Christmas, the funeral really got right. Um, we really do take those extra steps for us to make sure that we do honor the dead. That is part of the things that we do in South Africa. And knowing that this is going to be uh, broadcasted or shown in 190 countries with 240 million people watching this cultural thing that South Africans do, is really great for the culture and also for South Africa in general, because we really do, and it's really, it really is important to honor a dead person's wish, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I'm going to say, as much as I said, Smusiso had a great relationship with his dad, I also feel like all the boys, even the dad, are all mama's boys. So <laughs> how is it right there? Literally all of them. How is it right there and how is the whole thing uh, going? How's, how's the whole thing going? How so? Uh, the vibe is in everyone was literally on their mother's side and never actually considered maybe the wives and whatsoever. Because I even asked the other one uh, on the other room that you know yeah. the wife actually was even put into a very compromising situation where she had mm -hmm. to say you need to speak to your mother because yeah. we need to live here. You know, you know that the one thing I love about how to win Christmas the funeral and how to win Christmas as a series is the relatability. Um, you know, yeah. it's, it, it, we relate highly to it. You know, there's a lot of familiar tropes about it. And with regards to that question, that specific thing of Mama's Boys, they really do exist. And I'm sure a lot of people watching the show will be like, yes, that looks like so-and-so, or that's maybe me. I am that way, you know? And so they really do exist, you know? And I think that's the whole point of how to Christmas is not to necessarily show something is right or wrong, but it's to say, hey, how, does this not look any familiar to what you've experienced or your family? Does it not have something similar to this? So yeah, I mean, it was nice. The vibe was great, I guess, because that's oh, how that was the vibe. No, the vibe was great. Uh, it was nice playing characters that uh, are so dependent on, on the matriarch of the family. <laughs> yes, but do you feel like there should be some sort of boundaries with uh, the sons and with the sons and the mothers, like in general, not only on the show, where you tell your mother that actually, mom, this is my wife, you need to respect yeah. her. We should, you know, be in your place, but in a respectable way, obviously. Do you feel like they should be there? Because I feel like sometimes we get really scared to a point where you, you don't realize that, okay, this is actually going to. Yeah, well, I, I, feel, I feel like um, they definitely should be. Uh, there definitely should be boundaries because as a man to grow, you know, you have to have your own family and actually take that as a priority above, you know, your, your mother, for instance. And, and I think also the, the, the arcs, the, the character arcs of How to Win Christmas the Funeral really, really establishes that well. It really shows the growth of the men in the families and how they handle those things. And I think it can work as an example to show men that it is important for you to uh, prioritize the needs of your family, your immediate family, especially if there's children involved and, or in, in, along those lines, yeah. That's actually frozen, but it's okay. So, um, um, okay, this is my last question. Is there anything that we can expect from Sandile? Are there any things that you're working on that you would like to share? 
Well, currently I am, you know, I'm working on, on how to ruin Christmas, the wedding. Um, it's dropping on the 10th of December. Uh, we're really working on pushing it hard. Uh, I really want people to watch this show. You know, we all watch it. It's streaming in 190 countries. It's 240 million people going to watch it. And I'd really love for South Africa to show us the love that they also showed us in season one. And I really believe that they actually will. So 10th of December. They will. Yes. It, it, it was great. I loved it and I think everyone is going to love it. I think you guys are going, are going to take a lot of hours once again because it's Woo! great. Please. Like, um, so thank, thank you, you so much. I really enjoyed this. I uh, wish you guys all the best and um, yeah, I think this is my time to go. Thank you. Have a Merry Christmas. Thank you. Yeah, Merry Christmas thank to you too. You.